Now I am going to explain very important theorem boundedness theorem So what is boundedness theorem boundedness theorem on continuous functions So if a function fx is continuous on closed interval ab then it is bounded on ab okay it means let us suppose this is a function y is equal to fx this is a continuous function on closed interval ab okay then this is clear that this is bounded okay so now i am going to prove of uh, this very important theorem boundedness theorem so as we know by borel theorem if a function is continuous on a closed interval ab then this closed interval ab can be divided into finite number of sub intervals okay it means this is borel theorem means if a function is continuous on closed interval ab then this interval ab can be divided into finite number of sub intervals such that mod of fx1 minus fx2 less than epsilon x1 x2 belongs to ab okay so we shall use this theorem to prove of boundedness theorem okay so now we have by borel theorem we can divide this closed interval ab into n sub intervals okay means this is closed interval ab so we divide it into a e1 a1 a2 a2 a3 this type so n number of sub intervals means a e1 a1 a2 a2 a3 up to an minus 1 an an is nothing but b okay then we have y borel theorem mod of f x1 minus f x2 less than epsilon where x1 x2 belongs to ab and this epsilon is positive real number and epsilon greater than 0 so now we shall use this borel theorem for first interval okay so now for the first interval a e1 f x minus f a less than epsilon for every x belongs to a e1 okay also we have since mod of x minus y less than epsilon implies y minus epsilon less than x less than y plus epsilon okay this is the property of mod less because say mod x is equal to x and minus x so by this property we have y minus epsilon less than x less than y plus epsilon it means this is x this is y so mod of x minus y less than epsilon it means e of half a minus epsilon less than e of x less than e of a plus epsilon okay now for the second interval means a1 a2 now for the second interval a 
a1 a2 by using the borel theorem we have fx minus f a1 less than epsilon for every x belongs to a1 a2 okay so this can be written as I'll show f half x minus f half a is equal to mod of f x minus f a1 plus f a1 minus f a okay means by adding f a1 and subtracting f a1 this thing also by the property of mod of x plus y less or equal to mod x plus mod y okay so here this is x this is y so mod of f x minus f a less or equal to mod f x minus f a 1 plus mod f a 1 minus f a okay now here since f x minus f a x belong to a a 1 or so by putting a 1 so f a 1 minus f a less than epsilon so we shall use here this is less than epsilon plus epsilon is equal to 2 epsilon okay it means mod f a x minus a f a less than 2 epsilon similarly here we have used this property mod x minus y less than epsilon so y minus epsilon less than x less than y plus epsilon so by using this property here so this implies f of a minus 2 epsilon less than f x less than f a plus 2 epsilon for every x belongs to a1 a2 continuing this process continuing this process means for third interval and then fourth interval and then nth interval so we get f x minus so if we put here f a minus n epsilon okay so f of a minus n epsilon less than f a so less than f f x less than f a plus n epsilon it means if we put in place of 2 is n so this is f a minus n epsilon less than f x less than f a plus n epsilon okay for every x belongs to a b it means this is the form of l less than f x less than u it means l less than f a x less than u which is condition of bounded function okay therefore f a x is bounded on a b and hence proved 